Pac-Man has a lot of built-in subcommands and options for searching through your local package database. And this works, you know, quite well. But it can at times feel a little bit tedious because there's going to be a separate option for every single bit of data you want to get, which works great from a command line and automation perspective. But sometimes I just want to use a thing that gives me all of my data at once. And luckily for that, Pathfinder exists. Now, I'm using this on base Arch Linux, but from my understanding, it should work on any Arch-based system, whether it's Manjaro, whether it's Endeavor, whether it's Parabola, as long as you have Pac-Man available, this should be working. Now, this isn't like, say, Pamac. Pamac is an application that wraps around Pac-Man for installing applications. This won't let you install anything. This is just a browser of the database. So unlike Pamac, there is no risk of DDoSing the servers by searching for things. In this case, it works entirely offline. So there are six, I guess, categories that a package can be in. Installed, explicit, dependency, optional, orphan, and then most of the things you'll see in here don't have a reason whatsoever. And when I first used this application, I was very confused why there were so many things that didn't have a reason. And then I realized it's because they're not actually installed. So when you do something like, say, a pacman-syu, and that first step you see is syncing the package databases. What that is actually doing is getting a local copy of the metadata from those databases so Pac-Man knows what applications actually exist there, along with what changes need to be made and how big the download's gonna be and things like that. So this all packages category is pretty self-explanatory. This is every single package, regardless of whether it's installed or not, regardless of what repo it's in, everything that Pac-Man currently knows about. The installed category is every application you currently have installed for one reason or another, whether it's a dependency, whether it's explicitly installed, whatever reason it's installed for. As for the explicitly installed packages, these are packages that you went out of your way to install. So if I did something like, say, a pacman-syu, and then I install Firefox, this Firefox installation would be explicitly installed. But then any of the packages that Firefox depends on, those would be installed, but they would be installed as dependencies. But not every dependency is required for an application. Sometimes there'll be extra things you can install, and they'll give you some sort of extra functionality. Anything like that will be listed as an optional, and then any dependency where the application it was a dependency for is now no longer installed, that will be listed as an orphan. An orphan is basically a floating dependency, and if you're not using the application anymore, it should be uninstalled. But if you are using it, you should go and upgrade it to an explicitly installed application. This overview screen could certainly do with a bit of polish, but it basically does the job. So we have the description, we have the size of the application, but this isn't listed with a label or anything like that. The architecture of the application is running on. On my system, obviously, everything is going to be x86-64, and then the repository this application is from. But there are these extra tabs as well. We have the dependencies tab, dependence, and also details. Details is basically a text dump of all of the information that Pac-Man knows about this application. But under the Dependencies and Dependence tab, something really cool can happen. So all of these icons you see in here, all of these names you see in here, these are actually buttons. So if I go and click on GTK3, it now takes us over to that application, and we can actually keep following this tree down. So let's go over to, say, Cairo, and then over to Zlib, and then over to Glibc, and that should take us basically to the bottom. Oh, a little bit further, there's file system stuff and the kernel and stuff like that. But you can basically trace every single application's dependency tree all the way down to the bottom. Or go in the other direction and look at applications dependent on your current application. So right now we are looking at glibc and all of the applications in here, in some way or another, require glibc to be installed. One massive improvement for this section is adding in history, so an undo and a redo button, because sure, you can go back up and down the tree through the dependence and dependency section, but with something like glibc, there is a lot of dependence, and finding the exact button you were on before is going to take a little bit of time. One thing I didn't touch on before are these four folders under the package categories. We have core, extra, community, and multi-lib. Now you might recognize those names because all of those are names of Arch repositories. Basically, these are ways to filter by 
things that only exist in that repo. And that's cool and all, but you might notice they also have drop downs next to them as well. Let's take something like community. So you might see something like i3 here. Clicking on that, we can see i3 gaps, i3 wm, i3 blocks, i3 lock, and i3 status. So if I go into Pac-Man and I do a sudo pacman s i3, not any of those individual packages, just i3 itself. So what we're going to notice here is all of these packages show up. So i3 gaps, i3 wm, i3 blocks, i3 lock, and i3 status. So this drop down here is listing out the package groups inside of that repo. But there are plenty of other groups as well. One that basically everyone is going to recognize is in core, that being base devel. These groups are here to install a collection of applications that are commonly needed together in the case of base devel, or in the case of i3, grouping together related applications which you may not all want at the exact same time, but they're all related to the exact same use case. Now there is one more section here, that being the foreign section. Now, foreign is a little bit interesting because what it generally is going to be is the AUR. But because the AUR isn't a repo that you actually go and add into Pac-Man, it's basically a glorified Git repo. These have to be listed somewhere and Pac-Man doesn't know what to do with them, so they all get put into one location. But there are other cases where something may be a foreign package. Let's say you go and add multi-lib, but then you decide you want to remove it. But you don't go and remove any of the packages that you installed from multi-lib. I believe at that point, any of those leftover multi-lib packages will then be moved into the foreign category, so Pac-Man still has somewhere to keep track of them. Now, because the AUR isn't a package repository, at least in the typical Pac-Man sense, where you sync it with Pac-Man, you can't go and search for applications in the AUR outside of the ones you already have installed, like you could do with, say, core, extra community, and things like that. But the dev has considered adding in an AUR search feature, and I don't really think they should do it. I totally agree that it would be very convenient and would make the application easier for some people to use. The only concern I have is the same concern I have with Pamac doing the exact same thing. If it's done poorly and there is a lot of people using the application, the AUR isn't intended to have people constantly searching it. This can lead to a effectively a DDoS, not something that is done maliciously, but a DDoS based around the application's design. Overall, I think this is a really great application, and I could sit here and complain about the modern GTK design that breaks a lot of applications. Things like putting your search bar or any of the buttons you need inside of your header so when you go full screen, you can no longer see them. But I've gone on that spiel plenty of times, so I'm going to save you that for today. But before someone says it, yes, I am totally aware that you don't need this application. Pac-Man provides all of this information if you know the command you want to run. But for those who are more inclined towards using a GUI, this provides all of that same information in a very convenient manner. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Maybe you think this application is completely worthless and you're never going to use it. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, selling barrel pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast, Tech for Tea. I've got a gaming channel, Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out. <laughs>